Tonight's show is brought to you by... During these challenging times, are you concerned that your children aren't receiving a proper education? Has it been weeks since they stepped into a classroom or even opened up a textbook? Is your child starting to get that hateful notion that there are only two genders? We are here to help. Hi, I'm Pamela Sandberg from Santa Cruz, California. I am a two-time Educator of the Year recipient in Santa Cruz County, and I'm here to speak up for our future, the children. Children today are stuck at home without access to the educators responsible for shaping their minds on a daily basis. What kind of messages are they absorbing in this vulnerable state? Without teachers to educate them on the values of genderqueer studies, redistribution economics, and the perils of American colonialism, how will today's children learn to become the responsible global citizens our future demands? Educators need your support now more than ever, or we risk our country devolving further into capitalism, sovereignty, and bigotry disguised as free speech. That's why we need your support to ban homeschooling and only allow certified public educators like myself to shape the future of America. Because nothing is scarier than a generation raised by hateful breeders like you. Call 1-800-RE-EDUCATE for more information on how you can stand up for modern educational standards today. Hello and welcome to episode 27 of the War on Morons, where we speak truth to stupidity. I'm Jay. And I'm Anissa. And it's officially month five of the craziest year in human history. All right, maybe that's being a little hyperbolic, but things sure have been interesting as the country starts dipping its toes into the cesspool of normalcy once again. That's right. Just because your governor's letting you leave your house doesn't mean the morons aren't still out there. <laughs> and if you don't believe us, have you been on the roads lately? Like, is it just me, or did everyone in America forget to drive after a month and a half in quarantine? Oh, I know. I've completely forgotten how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's a war zone out there, people. <laughs> anyway, we've got some incredible stories for you this week, but first, we want to thank you all for tuning in once again. That's right. If you're a fan of our show and want to fight in the War on Morons, it's easy. Subscribe for free at thewaronmorons.podbean.com so you never miss an episode. And you can get access to our shows up to three days in advance. Also, call our call-in line so you can be part of the show. Uh, the number is 813-906-9099. Call in live or leave us a voicemail because we want to hear from you. Absolutely. And last but not least, we do need more recruits. So if you like the show, share us with your friends. Yep. Now on to our first story of the week. A lot of essential workers have been feeling the stress lately, and one Florida man who was having a bad day at work decided he would deal with that situation by calling in a bomb threat. All right, I mean, who hasn't done that? What? Everybody hasn't done that. <laughs> what on. kind of job does he have? He's a construction worker who was on a site in Wellington, Florida, and he thought this would be a good way to get the day off. That's like the, okay, so you're a construction worker and you're calling in a bomb threat. Right. Because you want less work. Right, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. No, no. I mean, if you're a construction worker and they bomb your job site, they're going to call you and they're going to be like, all right, buddy, you're working nights, you're working weekends, <laughs> we got to make up for everything that they blew up. That's right. That's like if I was a janitor and I threatened to blow up the bathroom. Like, I'm the person they're going to call. If, if you blew up the bathroom? Hopefully with the courtesy with the, flush. Stop it! With the bomb! <laughs> As a callback to last week. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, speaking of totally bombing, let's check in on the Biden campaign. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, looks like the latest headline shows old Joe is falling asleep during a town hall with Hillary Clinton. Hey, who wouldn't, you know, want to fall asleep while that old dag's talking? 
To be fair, I mean, she's probably drugging him. Hey, no, I do. That is completely unfair. Hillary's not going to drug him until she's named the vice presidential nominee. Okay, good <laughs> point. I mean, honestly, I just can't believe that he's the best that that party could come up with. I, the best? I mean, look, I, I just know that if I'm Joe Biden, well, this is proof that Joe Biden's senile. Yes. Because he wouldn't like be anywhere more. near Hillary Clinton in the position he's in right now if he still had full mental faculties. Oh, man. She's got a triple digit kill count. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. Don't kill us. Like, speaking <laughs> of dangerous combinations, Chris Cuomo's wife, Christina, is being mocked for saying she bathed in Clorox to treat her coronavirus. Bathed in Clorox bleach. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, her husband, the CNN blowhard, has been slamming Trump's suggestion people could be treated with disinfectant. Now, <laughs> the difference, of course, is that what Trump was suggesting is an actual medical procedure, and what Christina Cuomo did was play with dangerous chemicals that can kill you. Jeez, I mean, you're supposed to childproof your cabinets? You know, where you store your bleach for a reason? I mean... You She's pretty childish. How did she get it open? That's a good question. <laughs> I can't believe that she was like, you know what? Let me just like, why not just bathe in, you know, fucking Tide Pods too while we're at it? Well, just so you know, if by any weird, you know, chance out there, the Cuomo's are listening to this podcast, not only is bleach a great thing to bathe in if you're trying to kill the coronavirus, but you want to mix in a little ammonia. Stop it's it. Got- Stop it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, do not listen to what he just said. I'm trying to do the state of New York and all TV viewers a, a huge favor. Oh my God. Look, <laughs> the funniest part about this whole story, besides the fact that she actually did this to begin with, is the fact that she says it was recommended by her energy medicine doctor. Energy medicine? Yeah. Was it like a Reiki doctor or something? I have no idea. A a witch doctor? (laughs) Meanwhile, Clorox is having to warn not to bathe in bleach on its website. And apparently people like Christina Cuomo are the reason they have to have that warning in the first place. You know, I, I think that we should just let this all get sorted out. If you're dumb enough to inject bleach, if you're dumb enough to bathe in Lysol, if you're dumb enough to do any of this stupid shit... Don't put a warning label on the product. Just let them do it. Call the herd. <laughs> oh, man. Now, bathing in bleach is stupid, but it's not a crime. Vandals, however, have been setting 50 cell phone masts in the UK on fire because of a conspiracy theory that's linking to the coronavirus with 5G. Okay. So, wait, they set 50 cell phone masts on fire? Yep. Because they thought that there was 5G emanating from them and it was it was giving them all coronavirus? Exactly. Exactly. So they're just burning the cell phone towers down. I, I mean, I get it. I mean, they're taking one for the team, I guess. But they're getting pretty close to the magical coronavirus tower. Yeah, I mean, you would think that, like, the fire would set it off even more. Like, I wouldn't Or wanna... just being in a close enough proximity to set it on fire. Yeah, like, I wouldn't want to do that. I mean, one such attack forced the evacuation of some homes. Another actually damaged a mask providing coverage to emergency coronavirus hospital so the sad part here is that like these people who are in the coronavirus hospital like dying weren't even able to like talk on the phone to their relatives or like facetime them one last time because of these arsonists well you know i, I the one thing i can say in their favor is at least they're acting on what they believe in Come on, they're committing violent crimes. Hey, it's not violent. They set a, a, a cell phone tower on fire. They didn't set a person on fire. I mean, what if it burns someone's house down? Or I, I mean, the- casualties of war. Stop it! Come on, that is so ridiculous. I just don't understand. Fight the power. Nope. Nope. The Let War me. on Morons endorses burning. Power. Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, we're getting a call. Uh, what's this? Seven seven oh two. Is that Nevada? I don't know. Um, let's find out. All right. Caller, uh, you're on the air. State your name and where you're calling from. Yeah, man. I'm calling you live from the precipice of the apocalypse. <laughs> oh, hey, I know this voice. It's the fox from your undisclosed bunker. Yeah, no, man. Yeah, I mean, that, that was me. 
you know, the fox, the desert fox, and the, you know, in my bunker or whatever. You know, we don't got to do that anymore. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid anymore. You, you want to know my name? I'll tell you my name. Are you ready? Uh, sure. My name's Bob. 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 Bob Baker. And, and, and I'm in Henderson, Nevada. I'll even tell you my address. Whoa. One, three. All right. Well, I guess I don't got to tell you my address, but the point is, you know, we don't live in this crazy conspiracy world anymore, man. Like these guys you're talking about, where, where was that? You said in, uh, in, in England or something? Yeah, but got... Bob, I got to tell you, I mean, this is way different than the last conversations we've had. I mean, oh man, I, I used to be asleep. I was dreaming and I thought I was. You know, I thought I was woke, but I got to tell you, man, I, I can't do that anymore. I, I can't live in fear. So so the, these people, you know, they're burning down the 5G towers because it's, you know, it's radiating coronavirus cells through the microbes or whatever. Like, oh, man, that's kooky and it's crazy. It's just a cell phone tower, dude. I Relax, love take a chill pill. I thought that was what you were all about, man. I mean, no, what changed? No, I, okay, for years, man, for decades, you know, I was the one, you know, I was shouting, you know, I, I was telling everybody, you know, it's coming, you know, the government, they're going to hold us down, man. You got to get ready. You got to stop all your ammo. You got to bury food underneath the ground. You got to build a bomb shelter, you know, I, and I did all that, man. And, and, and now that, you know, that they're actually starting to tighten the grip a little bit. You know, I go on the internet and everybody and their uncle, you know, they, they think that they can be, you know, Mr. Conspiracy. And, and they can, they can, you know, you know, I can tell you that they're, they're not a sheep and all this other bullshit. Man. And I just, it makes me sick, man. I can't be like them. I, I'm going to go the other way. You know, I don't, I don't need to take that red pill. It tastes like shit. You know what I'm saying? Wait, so you're just giving up conspiracy theories because you want to be different than everyone else? Well, no, man. Look, let me tell you. I, I mean, we've had a few conversations. I've, I've told you about things before they happened, man. I, mean, I was right, but, like, nobody gave me a thank you note. You know, they didn't, they didn't say, thanks, Fox. You know, let me send you some, you know, some flowers and chocolates. They said I'm crazy, you know. I'll tell you, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this for a long time, brother. You, you, you remember that song? You remember that song? It was like, uh, <clears throat> come, 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 Oh, my God. Come and do Stop. Uh, it's hard to hit the notes, but, you know, Culture Club, Karma Chameleon. Remember that one? He kind of. 1984? Sure. Yeah, man, that, that song came out. I told everybody. I said, they're rubbing it in your face, man. Like, all your elected officials, all the actors, all the pop stars, man. They're all reptile creatures, and they're, they're wearing my human skin to try to fool you. And that's revelation of the message. You know what they said? I can only imagine. They said I was crazy, man. They said I was paranoid. Yeah. I, I didn't let them, I didn't let that stop me, man. Remember Tony Basil? You remember that song she sang? It was like, um, it was, a, it was a, hold on. Oh, no. Hey, Mickey, you want a pity? I don't understand. You take me by the heart. You take me by the hand. Hey, hey Mickey, uh, okay, I, okay, I know the song. Yeah. Hey, Mickey, hey, Mickey, you remember that one, right, man? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I told everybody, I said, oh, my God, man, that's the Walt Disney Corporation. You know, they're speaking through one of their clones, and they're telling you, they're telling you that they're, you know, interdimensional uh, Satan worshiping vampires and they're pedophiles. They want to rip out. They want to rip out the heart of a young girl. You know, as a sacrifice to the great God Mickey Mouse. And, and when I told everybody that, you know what they said? I thought you're a lunatic. They yeah, man. How'd you know? They said I was crazy. Yeah, I was crazy when you know when they when Tiffany made that song. You know, I, I think we're alone now. Stop. <laughs> I told everybody that that, that song, it, it's, it's 
telling everybody, he's telling us that, that we're all just pixels in an Atari screen, what? man. We're, we're inside of a, we're inside of an arcade game. You know, we're in a simulated reality. And, and they told me I was crazy when I told them that. And now these same people, they've been calling me crazy. They want to go on the internet and they want to say that the government is trying to, you know, institute martial law. Or they want to force you to take a vaccine. Or, or they want to, you know, they want a new world order. And I say, you can't steal my shit, man. That's taking my gimmick. And it's not fair. So I'm, I'm going to take the blue pill. I'm going to take the blue pill, man. You know what? Bob, that sounds like a really good plan. Um, yeah, trust your government. You know, watch more TV. Watch CNN, especially. Uh, you know, buy a face mask, man, and don't leave your house. Stay safe. Stay at home. Get a damn flu shot. God damn it. Wow. I can't believe the turnaround that guy made. It's like night and day, isn't it? It really is. He's still insane. He just wants to be different, you know? Yeah. But I, I, I don't know if I can get used to calling him Bob. No, that what is was it? pretty weird, Bob, to be honest. Bob B- Baker, was it? <laughs> the, the Price is Right guy? Oh, man. <laughs> Let's just move on to our next story of the night. <laughs> In other news, a charity that was affiliated with a prominent and controversial ultra-Orthodox rabbi has been promising donors who pay $836 that they will enjoy immunity from the coronavirus Eight, for themselves. $836? Well, that's like the exchange rate. So, like, they're based in another country. Oh, and... okay. I was about to say that's an oddly specific number. <laughs> I'm about to get old Bob on the phone and ask him about, like, the numerical significance <laughs> of 836. Right? He'd probably tell you it's just a normal number now. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he's basically promising, like, oh yeah, if you donate, like, you know, you and your family will be totally safe from coronavirus. You know, all we need is your money, and uh, you're good. Yeah. You say it's an Orthodox rabbi? Yep. Boy, it's almost like he's up to some kind of greedy, like, hand-rubbing, highly immortal money-making scheme or something, isn't it? What? Oh, no, no. Those people would never do that. Stop! Oh, my God! I didn't say anything! You are so... So bad. <laughs> Honestly, I just think it's crazy how, like, people will take advantage of other people. You know, they'll prey on the fear in, like, the most blatant ways. Like, obviously, if donating money could make you immune from coronavirus, like, everyone would be doing it. But it's clearly a ploy. Is anybody falling for this? Yes, the U.S. government. <laughs> I mean, how many trillions have they thrown at this stupid thing? True. <laughs> but yeah, you make a good point. I can't believe the amount of scams that I'm seeing. When I'm, you know, like when we're doing show prep or we're looking at these stories, it's just another scam after another, tricking people into thinking they can pay money and make this like illness go away. Right. Like clearly, if anybody had the cure for this, we'd already, you know, we would be able to leave our homes, go to Walmart, wouldn't have to wear face masks. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> Well, one New York rabbi clearly didn't pony up to the donation table as he recently died of COVID-19. Now, when hundreds gathered for his funeral in Williamsburg, Mayor Bill de Blasio tweeted a threatening message to the Jewish community stating, quote, My message to the Jewish community and all communities is this simple. The time for warnings has passed. I have instructed the New York Police Department to proceed immediately to summons or even arrest those who gather in large groups. Okay. This is about stopping the disease and saving lives, period. Boy, you know, I I try not to be too, uh, you know, I, I try not to make these ridiculous historical comparisons too often, but, you know, you kind of sound like Hitler, Bill. Right! Like, (laughs) come on! I just don't understand how he thought that singling out the Jewish community would be a good idea, like, regardless. I'm sure that's going to play really well in New York. (laughs) They're going to be lining up to, you know, to reelect this guy. He's really coming (laughs) under fire for this one. And his defense is like, oh, of course I was fired up. Like, I'm seeing people's lives are at risk of life. It's like, come on, you were so tone deaf when you tweeted this. Like, politicians (laughs) should not be tweeting point blank, period. Look here, Jews. Stop it. Don't don't make us put you in camps. I know. (laughs) Unbelievable. Like, he might as well 
have said that. Might as well have. Well, I'm just glad he did it because I am ready to see the end of Mayor Bill de Blasio's reign. I don't know. He's given us a lot of great content. True. Well, you know, <laughs> after he's done being mayor of New York, he'll probably run for president. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's popularity at, at that level yet. Hey, he's tweeting. He's crazy. I mean, he's obviously next in line. <laughs> and if you think that Mayor de Blasio's popularity is crashing, get a load of this next block of stories. In China, a new driver crashed his car off a bridge and into a river just 10 minutes after passing his driver's exam. Okay, so does that mean that he gets to still keep his passing grade, or are they going to like... <laughs> <laughs> I would hope that he doesn't. I mean, the inexperienced motorist was actually reading text messages from his friends congratulating him on passing his exam when he took his eyes off the road. Okay, well, I mean... You know how many freaking characters there are in the Chinese language? No, I don't. There's like 50,000 characters. Jeez. I can only imagine that reading text messages as you're driving around is a little bit harder over there. Yeah, no kidding. And I mean, honestly, if you view the video or even see the picture of the crash, like, it's the stupidest thing in the world. For one, you shouldn't be texting and driving. I would think they'd cover that in the driver's exam. But two, this bridge that he was on has no guardrails like literally if you move your it's like in mario kart where like if you go off the rainbow road like you're falling into space like that's what this bridge looks like yeah well i mean to be fair he's probably really excited yeah i mean i guess so if you're really excited to be driving maybe you should focus on driving <laughs> not only was he no longer riding a bicycle but they actually let him have his own phone you know what Let's just move on, because that's clearly not the only stupidity we're seeing from people on the roads this week. In New Jersey, a driver crashed head-on into a pole after passing out from wearing an N95 mask for hours. Oh, that's great. So he's wearing... So he's wearing the stupid face mask because he's afraid of an invisible virus. That, right, he's alone know. in his car <laughs> wearing the mask. Like, I don't get it. And this is probably listed as a coronavirus death. <laughs> did, did he die in the crash? I don't think so. Police <laughs> do believe that he lost consciousness while behind the wheel from a lack of oxygen and breathing in excessive carbon dioxide thanks to the mask. But at least he was safe from the Rona. Oh my god. <laughs> Our final story in this block is definitely the worst. In Minnesota, a man who was driving his Mustang was arrested after he actually led the state police on a high-speed pursuit because he, quote, thought they wanted to race apparently they did <laughs> i mean they chased him down right <laughs> i think they probably gave off some pretty big indicators that they were not looking to race i mean according to the press release 25 year old musab al hussein was clocked by troopers going 120 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone now, his red Mustang was chased for 25 miles with troopers throwing stop sticks twice before the pursuit ended. I don't know. I'm thinking, like, maybe you could think they're wanting to race until they get on the freaking loudspeaker and say, pull over your car now. Like, that's a pretty big clue, right? No, no. They're just trying to trick him. He's not going to fall for that shit. <laughs> what about the stop sticks? Like, wouldn't that maybe be an indicator? Yeah, he's probably, you know, grew up playing Mario Kart. They're lucky you didn't throw a turtle out the window. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a lot of Mario Kart references here. Folks, we are not living in the Mario Kart world. Like, when you're out on the roads, please drive like a normal human being. Yeah, that's what she says. I drive around with bananas. I drive around with turtles. I drive around with glowing star. All right, moving <laughs> on. Oh, actually, look at that. We're getting a call. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, hello, caller. Why don't you tell us your name and where you're calling from? Hi, this is Llewellyn from Plano, Texas. Oh, oh Llewellyn, oh. how you doing? I'm doing just peachy. Now, I'm calling in because I'm seeing the same thing y'all are seeing. I mean, all these foreigners on the road are really dangerous. And I just can't believe that they're even allowed to drive. <laughs> Hold on. We didn't say anything about foreigners being not allowed to drive. I don't know where you got that from our segment. Oh, yes, you did. You were talking about that Chinaman texting and driving. I mean, I don't know where he got the idea that he could take his eyes off the road. He can barely keep them open as it is. <laughs> and then you've got Mr. Muhammad, what's his name, speeding around. He was trying to get to a place so he could blow something up or something. I, no, I don't think there 
there's any evidence that the, the gentleman in Minnesota was a terrorist. Well, I mean, obviously he was. You read his name, for goodness sakes. And I mean, I'm just saying, I agree with you. I'm seeing the same thing here in Texas. I mean, these drivers are out to kill. I mean, I, to be fair, I mean, I'm seeing the same thing in Florida. But it's it's not any particular ethnicity. I mean, it's... It's like everybody's been cooped up in the house so long they forgot the rules of the road. Are you blind or just dumb? Of course, it's these foreigners. I'm telling you, that's why I called the sheriff's office. They are trying to kill me and my family. I'll tell you what. These Mexicans across the street are out here street racing in the okay. neighborhood. They've got a fiesta going on. I mean, I'm just trying to keep my family safe. We're social distancing. We're going for walks around the block, and that's the only time we get out of the house. And meanwhile, these Mexicans are out on the street. Okay, they Llewellyn, I... houses and their music going ding I mean, I, it does sound like a a lot to deal with as a, a as a neighbor. You, so you're saying they're throwing like huge parties? That's right. They've got all kinds of fiestas going on, and I tried to call the sheriff. I said they're trying to kill me and my family. The sheriff said that when there's nothing they could do, that they weren't breaking any laws. I said they're breaking the speed limit. They said, well, that's your word against theirs. It's unbelievable. So I went over there. I mean, I had to stay at least six feet away, which was hard to do because there was like 25 of them or something. And I told them, listen, y'all better stop what you're doing because I've got a gun. And oh my I'm not God. afraid to use it. So you pulled a gun on them. Absolutely. What would you do if they were trying to kill you and your family? I'm trying to stay safe from this coronavirus. And they're out here, you know, tearing it up. It's just not right. All right, Llewellyn. Well, I, I feels for you, I guess. Please try not to brandish any more firearms at your neighbors, though. It's, it's It can be dangerous. Listen. Listen, I'm in Texas. If they don't want to have firearms brandished on them, they should have stayed the hell in Mexico. Oh, my God. Why is she, like, the worst person in the world? Like, <laughs> I don't even really... That's, like, the third time that she's called us bragging about pulling a gun on people. I, I really can't stand that woman. Like, there's so much wrong there. I don't know how the cops haven't arrested her yet. <laughs> One day somebody's going to pull a gun back and she's going to get in a firefight. I think she would win, but... I mean, it's pretty outrageous. Yikes. Anyway. Look, let's just move on to our next round of stories, our final round of idiots. Ah, all right. A Harvard professor wants to ban homeschooling because it's, quote, authoritarian. Okay. Elizabeth Bartholet told Harvard Magazine that it gives parents authoritarian control over their kids and can even expose them to white supremacy and misogyny. Boy, that's almost as bad as paying, you know, $100,000 a year for your children to be brainwashed. <laughs> <laughs> this woman even went so far as to host an anti-homeschooling summit and is calling for a ban on homeschooling, which is totally unconstitutional. Yeah. Um, I mean, they've got to protect their brand, I guess. Look, speaking as somebody who was homeschooled, I can say for a fact that there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's well within parents' rights. I don't understand people who think the government could do a better job of educating your kids than a parent could. I don't know how people think the government can do a better job at anything <laughs> than a human being can. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Harvard students, for all the clout that they had at one point, now they're just people that have three, four $400,000 in debt and no practical skills. Very true. Although I will say I have to give some of the Harvard students credit. Not surprisingly, plenty of Harvard students were homeschooled before they attended Harvard. And they're actually speaking out against this, hosting their own, uh, you know, events and, and speaking out saying homeschooling is, you know, protected by the Constitution. It's freedom of religion. It's a lot of things. And, 
you know, we're here at Harvard because we were homeschooled. So I have to give them a little bit of credit there. Yeah. I mean, last thing I, I'm going to say on this, I mean, the brightest student I've ever heard of uh, going to Harvard wasn't even one of their students. Um, it was like their janitor or something. He was like the smartest mathematician in the whole school. What? Um, I, I can't remember his name. They did a whole, like, uh, I think they made a documentary about him. What's it called? Um, something about hunting. Are um, you talking about the movie Goodwill Hunting? Yeah, yeah. He was like the smartest kid in in Harvard, and he didn't even go there. Oh my god! How you like them apples? You know, I really thought you know if you're going to talk about a fictional Harvard student, <laughs> let's talk about L. Woods, okay? <laughs> Come on. Moving on. <laughs> While we're on the topic of unqualified parents, a 27-year-old mom broke both of her ankles trying the popular Oh Na 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 TikTok dance challenge. All right. What a way to waste hospital resources. <laughs> you know, they've got this health crisis going on, supposedly, and then you show up there and you're like, uh, no, I don't have the Rona. I just broke my freaking ankles doing a TikTok dance. <laughs> And if anybody knows about TikTok dances, it's nurses at a hospital. Oh, that's true. And if you think TikTok <laughs> dance challenges are stupid, you'll be stunned by this next challenge that's gaining popularity. The Pee Your Pants Challenge was started on... Wait, 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 wait. What? The Pee Your Pants Challenge. The Pee Your Pants Challenge. Yep. I mean, I, I hate to say but what's the challenge? Oh, it's exactly what it sounds like. On April 18th, a TikTok user uploaded a video of himself saying, pee your pants challenge, as he proceeds to urinate in his pants on video. So, so there's nothing more involved in this. It's just, hey, everybody, watch me. I'm going to pee in my pants. And people are doing it. Uh, Jesus Christ. Like, how far away for, from ow my balls are we? <laughs> It's really turning into an idiocracy type uh, world. Back when I was a kid, I mean, we had the pee your pants challenge. What? It, well, it was called going to a frat party. Oh, you geez. know, like at least there were some steps involved there. There's a keg stand. There's <laughs> drinking 15, 16 natty lights. Like, I mean, there's a, there's a lot a lot more than just saying, "Hey, I'm of completely sober mind, and I'm just gonna." put a camera on and urinate all over myself it's honestly really cringeworthy to watch wow. very disgusting <laughs> by far though the most dangerous tiktok challenge making there's more headlines this week oh yeah oh there's more <laughs> oh wow <laughs> it's the nutmeg challenge which is going viral yet again let me guess it's uh, you gotta hit yourself in the nuts <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. So users are uploading videos that show that they get intoxicated from consuming excess amounts of the nutmeg spice. However, the high that comes from consuming large amounts of nutmegs is actually pretty dangerous. I don't even know how to comment on this. <laughs> so they're like, they're going and raiding the spice cabinet and just like snorting things? Well, they're like mixing it in milk and drinking it. I don't know. It's pretty, sounds pretty disgusting to me, to be honest. God. Why don't they try like the clean your room challenge? Right. Or the shut the fuck up challenge. Or the read a book challenge. <laughs> like, come on. Speaking of stupid things to do on the internet, a Florida man says he bought 203 URLs protesting coronavirus shutdowns in order to troll conservatives. Okay. Now his plan was to resell them and turn a pretty profit. But now the self-proclaimed liberal is getting harassed online by his <laughs> own kind who have mistaken him for a conservative protester. Oh, that's amazing. So basically he wasted a bunch of money just to get abuse yeah, from his he, fellow liberals. He racked up a $4,000 credit card bill and he's found absolutely zero buyers for these websites. Like nobody wants them. Yeah, it says that they're like, like reopenmichigan.com and stuff like that. Yep. It's because conservatives... Don't waste all their time protesting on the internet. They actually try to get things done. Right. Like setting 5G towers on fire. Okay. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he wants to waste $4,000, I mean, he could have just donated to the Bernie Sanders campaign. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, people are pretty divided here in Florida on whether or not to reopen the state after, you know, everything ha happened with COVID-19. And uh, one man who is dressing as the Grim Reaper promises to haunt Florida's reopened beaches in protest. Okay, so he's just wearing a 
freaking Grim Reaper costume and yep. walking around on the beach in Florida. Exactly. In May. Right. This guy's going to get heat stroke. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he's an attorney, so it's not like he doesn't have better things to do, but instead he's, you know, dressing up in full Grim Reaper garb and he's actually tweeting a photo of himself doing this stating... Many of you have asked if I'm willing to travel around Florida wearing Grim Reaper attire to the beaches and other areas of the state opening up prematurely. The answer is absolutely yes. Okay, so he thinks that the beaches aren't safe and that nobody should be going there, right? Right. And his dumbass is going there every single day. <laughs> uh, I bet he got his law degree from Harvard. <laughs> I bet so. Oh, man. Looks like we're getting another call. This ought to be good. Yeah, 206, Seattle. <laughs> All right. Hello, caller. Why don't you tell us your name and where you're calling from? Hey, it's me. It's very helpful. Um, and I think we're in um, Everett. Everett today. Very helpful. Yeah. I'm the Dr. Dingo Show. How are you? Hi. I, I remember you. What are yeah, you up yeah. to? I'm helping Dr. Ding Dong. I'm because I'm very helpful. I always help out. <laughs> Look, if you're gonna try to play some disturbing footage, I mean, we're not gonna put no. up with that anymore. No, 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 no. Wait, this isn't this isn't on the TV. We're we're on a special mission. Um, we we've been driving a, um the the we've been driving the Ding Dong van all over Seattle and, and helping all the children. And, and I'm in the van now. The, Dr. Ding Dong, he's in the house. Um, I'm, I'm, the, I'm looking out. I'm the lookout, okay? Yeah, okay, I know you two, and you're yeah. absolute psychopaths. What are no, you up to? No, I, I'm, not, I'm not a, a psychopath. I'm a teddy bear. You know I'm what? Help, help out. What are you doing? What are uh, you doing? Well, I heard you talking about the man in, in Florida that, that's trying to... Tell people not to go to the beach, um, cause even though the the um the governor said to go to the beach, it's it's dangerous, cause there's a coronavirus. Um, and, and that sounds a lot like what me and Dr. Ding Dong are doing to help people in in Seattle. Okay. So what? You're going around in some creepy van and scaring people? No, no, no. We're not. It's not scary. No, we're helping the children um, who, if they, if they got them, uh, if their mommy and, and daddy are um, not being safe, and, and if they're trying to go outside and, and they're not being a social um, distancing, that, then we help protect their children, okay? I, I, uh, I, it's, I don't think it's okay. I don't know what you're doing, Barry, but... No, well, it's, I, I'm just helping watch out, you know, to make... Make sure nobody sees, because Dr. Ding Dong says, you know, if anybody sees, that they'll think that we're, the, we're bad, but we're good, okay? We're, we're the good guys. Okay, well, I highly doubt that. Highly. Oh, hold on, hold on. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> what the hell is going on? What's going on? Oh, no, we're on, we're on a mission. 
am calling the police. Where are you bringing oh, these no, kids? No. Oh, we're bringing them to Ding Dong Land. Because there's no coronavirus in Ding Dong Land. <laughs> We've got a 0% infection rate. There's no such thing as Ding Dong Land, you absolute psychopath. There, there's Ding Dong Land. That's where we live. That's why it's very helpful. And soon all of your children are coming home. Not if I have anything to say about it. What the hell? You let those kids go. Oh my god, we have to look up the number to the Seattle Police Department. What the hell is wrong with those two? Why the hell did they call us? Uh, they, I mean, okay, it, did I hear it correctly? They're driving around in a van, breaking into houses, and, and, and kidnapping children? Yes, now we have to wrap up the show quickly. I can't let them do this. I, uh, I, this is crazy. I, I, well, we got their number, at least. We can... Uh, all right, uh, that's that's all for for this week, folks. Uh, thanks for tuning in, uh, but we we gotta handle this. Yeah, we gotta go. Have a good week, everyone. Brother, you